In this series of videos, we're going to be talking about solutions. Now it's possible that you already came to this series of videos when you were working on other problems in general chemistry. Maybe you got to a particularly difficult problem and you thought, let's go look at the solutions. Well, if you did that, you were thinking of a different definition of solution. That definition says that a solution is a means of solving a problem or dealing with difficult situations. For example, we could say that there's no easy solution to financial or relationship problems. However, we'll be using a different definition of solution, and that is a mixture in which a minor component is uniformly distributed within a major component. It's important to understand solutions because many of the substances we'll deal with in our real lives are actually solutions. The ocean is an excellent example of a solution because it's a uniform mixture of different salts or ionic compounds dissolved in water. As we progress through these videos, we'll have four primary goals. First, we'll want to understand the solution process. This means we should understand the energetics when a minor component mixes with a major component. Second, we'll want to be able to predict the relative solubility of particular compounds. We'll want to do this both qualitatively in other words, will one compound be more or less soluble than another compound? And we'll also want to talk about it quantitatively, specifically how much of a particular compound will dissolve in another. The third major goal we'll have is to calculate solution concentrations. We'll use a number of different measures of solution concentrations. The final goal is to describe and calculate colligative property effects in different types of solutions. Before we begin our discussion of solutions, I want to point out some concepts that you should recall from previous general chemistry videos. First of all, you should recall how to use molar mass as a conversion factor. You should also recall how to use mole ratios and density as conversion factors. You should recall the concept of a limiting reactant. You should also review the definition of molarity and its use as a measure of solution concentration. It would help if you recall the difference between ionic and molecular solutes. Finally, you should take some time to review the definitions, relative strengths, and the types of molecules that have the different types of intermolecular forces. We've already provided one definition of a solution as a mixture in which a minor component is uniformly distributed within a major component. We can expand on this definition a little bit by adding that a solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances in which one substance disperses uniformly throughout another. We have special words for the minor component and the major component. The major component we call the solvent, and this is the substance that is present in the larger amount. The minor component is a substance present in the smaller amount, and we call this compound the solute. When a solution forms, we have to look at the physical states of the solute and the solvent. Even though in these videos we'll consider most of the solutions in the liquid phase, we can have solutions in other physical states, and the physical state of the, of the solution will depend on the physical state of the solvent. The ability of a substance to form solutions depends on a few things. First of all, it depends on the intermolecular forces involved in the solution process, and this includes the intermolecular forces between particles of the same substance, for example, between two water molecules, or between two hexane molecules, as well as intermolecular forces between the two different components. For example, are there any intermolecular forces between the hexane and the water? In addition to these factors, we also have to consider the natural tendency of substances to spread into larger volumes. This is a concept known as entropy, and although we'll introduce it in the upcoming videos, we'll spend much more time talking about it when we talk about thermodynamics in later chapters. In this short video, 
we introduce some of the key ideas about solutions from a chemical standpoint. By now, you should be able to define solutions, but at the same time, if we were to give you a description of a mixture, you should be able to identify if that mixture is a solution or not. You should also be able to identify the solvent in a solution, and at the same time, you should be able to identify the solute or solutes in a solution.